And it's good to see more and more people coming back to church, but of course we still know we have people watching online and we want to welcome them as well. We we'll always have people watching different settings online. We're glad to be able to offer that platform. I want to tell you that we are in the middle of a series called Verified, and what the series is really about is the verified, the authentic promises of God for anybody who is a believer. And we're going through these together, and today is probably one of my favorite things that is verified, probably for every believer is one of our favorite things to talk about. It's heaven. And I want to talk about heaven here in just a little bit. Before I get to that, you know last weekend at our church we had a, we had a, at the beach, we went to a beach baptism, and, and we had what was taking place as people were baptized there at the beach, as people who, who understood that they did have uh, their eternal destination secured into heaven. And they had made a decision to invite Christ into their life, uh, whether it had been just recently or maybe for many years and just had never been baptized. They made those public proclamations of faith in Jesus Christ that they understood things of following God here on this earth being important, but also salvation uh, leading us to an eternity in heaven. And we put together a little video, a uh, really quick one, because there was a lot of videos or a lot of baptisms. Watch this video. Yeah, 62 baptisms in total last week. So we're thankful for that. God is continuing to do in our church, uh, even with everything going on around us. God is still doing this thing. Uh, this topic, though, about heaven this week, my goodness, it is um, a topic that probably, you know, it's probably not a person around that say, well, if you got something to teach me about heaven, I guess I, I'd listen. And, and I think probably a lot of people would say, well, uh, I, I'd like to go there you know, one day. And so it's a pretty, it's a pretty popular topic to and investigate, to unpack, to talk about. It's all over our, 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 you know, what we experience in culture today, still today, uh, things about heaven are talked about and dealt with in, in movies. Uh, some of the best-selling books of all time, you know, are dealing with the topic of, of heaven. We use it in our vernacular and our language. We use this talk about heaven in various different ways. You know, heaven help us. And that was such a heavenly experience. And then, of course, you know, if we're dating, you know, we're a match made in heaven. So we use this talk, we throw it around about heaven. But I do think at the end of the day, uh, people do want to know about this verified promise of God where we spend an eternity. I think we can always want to know more. I think we crave to know more when I say heaven. Maybe some of you think about some of the very specific things in the scriptures that the Bible talks about. Others of you may think about things that were told to you over history of your life, like folklore. You know, grandma said some really neat things about heaven, and maybe grandma was accurate. Uh, maybe she wasn't, <laughs> but she was real sweet talking about heaven, and, and grandmas are great. But at the end of the day, no matter what it is we're dealing with in this culture and in this world, we're not depending on folklore or what other people say. We're depending on what the Word of God says. That's our first and foremost place. What would it look like, by the way, if on every single topic that we deal with in culture, we would set aside what the world says and just simply focus on what God says? I can tell you our, our lives would be a whole lot different and our communities would be a whole lot different. But this is one of those topics. Like, okay, there's a lot of chatter about what's going on in heaven, but let's really get to the bottom of it because you need to know this. Our spiritual adversary doesn't want you to unpack any particular topic for your life, and he doesn't want you to unpack the truth about heaven. He wants you to kind of uh, just keep your eyes closed about the truths about heaven. Before I get into that place, that destination, heaven, I, I do want you to understand that we don't have to wait, you know, we don't have to wait until we draw our last breath here on earth to encounter things of heaven. This is important. First of all, here's what it says in John 14 and verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no one comes to the Father, Jesus said, except through me, through Jesus. 
And so what we understand, what we understand is when we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that connects us to God. That makes that connection. You don't have a relationship with Jesus, you are not connected to God. When you and I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, it activates our prayer life. The Holy Spirit of God dwells inside of us. And the things of the heavenly realm that we're able to learn and understand through the Holy Spirit of God. You're in a time of need. You're dealing with a struggle in your life. You're looking to have access to somebody to help you and the friend that you were counting on. They're asleep and they ain't answering the phone. But 247, God's available to the believers to access the heavenly realm. I put this in your notes if you're writing down. I put this, we don't have to wait until heaven to have access to heaven. You're a believer in Christ? The Bible says that Jesus is there interceding on our behalf in our prayer life and our needs to the heavenly Father. If you want to have a prayer life, you activate a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You want to you want to understand some truths about heaven and for your life, you activate that relationship. You want to be a part of the family of God? You activate your relationship with God through Jesus Christ. It says in Hebrews 4, 4 and verse 16, it says this, Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence, those of us who are believers, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We have that. Romans 5, 2, it is our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. It is through Jesus Christ that we have access. Philippians 4, 9, my God will supply all our needs, your needs, according to his riches in glory. By who? By Christ Jesus. It is done. It is accomplished. That connectivity happens through that relationship with Jesus. Now, the good news for us, now let, let's move towards that destination place. Just wanted to pause there, make sure you understand you can still have access to things of the heavenly realm, but let's consider that place, that place heaven. We don't have to imagine some things. We've got a lot of data in the Word. There's a lot that we can look at and get some truth about it. I have to say, when I was growing up, uh, you know, I didn't know Jesus, and, you know, I heard folklore, and people said things about heaven. I got to be honest, I, I pretty much thought what heaven was going to be is this big church service in the sky where we're, you know, in robes. We got halos, probably, on our head. We move from cloud to cloud, something like that, you know, and, and it really doesn't do it justice. You know, some of the folklore out there, the things that we've bought into about heaven, it's really nice but it doesn't do it justice. I think there's some folklore out there about heaven that would cause anybody to go, eh, that doesn't sound real good. I'd rather stay here. But when we look at the truth of what the word says, we go, oh, whoa, I want that. Going to heaven is not sitting in some mansion that God has given you, watching Netflix all day, eating M&Ms. It's more than that. It's something so much greater. And that's why looking into the word is indeed so critical. Of course, this is one of my favorite topics I could ever talk about. What preacher doesn't want to talk about heaven? We don't want to talk about hell. It's just not a fun topic. I've preached on that multiple times here at our church because there's a lot of data in the word about hell. But there's a lot of information about heaven, this very real place where we spend an eternity. We continue our purpose with God forever and ever and ever. Just to think about this topic I think is not easy. I think this put, puts us in a very difficult place when it comes to this topic. You understand that when we're dealing with heaven, we're talking about eternity. We're talking about infinite. And anytime you and I have to try to digest in our minds, understand what infinite is, it's hard. Because everything we know and everything we understand, everything we see, it's all about finite, finite, finite. And when I stand before you and say, let's consider eternal, forever and ever infinite, our minds are blown. It's just really hard to grasp. And so I do understand that that makes that very difficult. But at the end of the day, because God has given us enough information, we can digest it. We can make decisions. And this decision that I'm talking about here today, the decision to spend an eternity with God, if you make this decision, you will discover, I promise one day, that you are very, 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 very right in making this decision. But if you don't get this critical decision of your life right, you will discover one day, I promise, 
that you are very, 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 very wrong. We want to get it right. I've been praying that through this talk and through this time, you would care to unpack the truth about heaven. I always think of heaven as being something like uh, what I encountered in my, my honeymoon uh, when I, yeah, you're thinking of something else. <laughs> my honeymoon, my wife, we, we went snorkeling uh, in this really beautiful place where it was something like I had never seen before. If you've ever been snorkeling on coral and reef and where there's fish, and it, it's really a spectacular thing. Now, I want to say, as some of you know, I wasn't here last week teaching. Pastor Eddie led the teaching last week so I could have a little bit of a break. Sean and I, we celebrate our 25th anniversary. I want to thank Pastor Eddie for teaching for us last week. But it reminded me last week of that, of that honeymoon and Going snorkeling, you know, I had been snorkeling before, snorkeled in the pool, been to the beach, you know, and snorkeled, but I had never seen this. You know, this thing that's happening underwater that we're oblivious to, all of our, you know, walking around earth, we're not thinking anything about what, but there's a whole different world that's down there. And when I first sunk into the water, you know, it was no big deal, it felt like I was in my pool, but then as I turned down and looked, I saw the radiance and the brilliance and the beauty of the rocks as they were in color and they were shining and sparkling and then fish with incredible color that I had never seen before and then the next fish is even more spectacular and all of a sudden God is revealing this spectacular view below me of things that are happening that I could be so oblivious to in my everyday life and yet here is this incredible thing happening and I think when you and I draw our last breath step into eternity, God is going to reveal things that we just didn't fully know that were available to us that were there. It was just incredible brilliance and radiance and the color and the nature of what's going to happen in heaven as we fix our eyes on it. It's going to be an amazing, beautiful scene. And when we start thinking about unpacking heaven, you and I do have something to help us, to cause us to want to know about heaven. The Bible tells us that every one of you and everybody listening online within the sound of my voice right now, the Bible tells us, and this is true, you can fight it if you want, but at the end of the day, it is 100% true that every single person created has a longing or a desire in the depths of their soul to know about eternity. This is what it says in Ecclesiastes 3.11. He's made everything beautiful in its time. He's also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. Of course, we don't fully understand all the things that God is doing, but it says there in the middle of that text that God has set eternity in the heart of humanity. And that means we have something like this hole in our heart that wants to know, like, what is there that's beyond this life? Is there something more? We all have that craving, that unique desire. And the Word of God tells us that when you and I discover how to fill that hole, it's a game changer. We fill that hole most of our lives, if we're not careful, with very temporary things that never work out. But when we make that decision to say, I accept that gift of Jesus Christ, of salvation for humanity, I accept that gift personally. I have been forgiven of my sin. I understand, I know that I'm spending eternity in heaven. The longing of your heart changes dramatically. Until you deal with that longing, you'll always find yourself wanting, wanting for more. It's a choice. Heaven or hell is a choice. You and I choose that. And again, you want to make sure you make the right choice. He set us up for success. He said, I'm putting this yearning in your heart. Now, take, a, take advantage of the greatest love choice a, hum, a love a human could ever have, the choice to love your heavenly Father, Hebrews 11, 13, and 16. I want to read these scriptures to you. All, this is important. All these people were still living by faith when they died. Pause right there for just a second. There were people, it's talking about they were living in faith, and then they died. See, this is the part where an unbeliever, you know, really uh, likes to throw out things. They'll, they'll say things like, oh, well, you believe. You know, that person was a believer, and yet they died. No, duh. We knew that because we're smart. You see, Christians are smart. We understand that the birth-to-death ratio is still one-to-one. -one. 
And, and that's the fact for a believer and an unbeliever. You can be a person of faith here on this earth, but you will physically draw your last breath. We understand that. Here's why we come into an environment like this and worship. Here's why we come into an environment like this and celebrate. This is why we're so excited to do what we do here, worshiping on the weekends like this, because God, therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Why? For he has prepared a city for them. We know that there's something beyond this. And we worship God and we thank him and we celebrate this. What will our... What will our life be like in the eternal realms? I can tell you the disposition will be this. John 15, 11, Jesus said, I told you this so that you, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Joy in heaven. Uh, think about it like this. What is the most joyful experience you've ever had on earth? Multiply it times whatever exponentially and it will not match the joy of heaven. It just won't. Heaven is this joyful place. Let me, give you, let me give you a few other things about heaven. In your notes, I hope you're taking notes. Uh, taking notes is one of the greatest ways to enhance your comprehension, your remembering of something. We know this. Education tells us, the science tells us that, that this is a key way to comprehend. And so uh, beyond typing, you know, you can type on your iPhone, but if you want the greatest level of retention... You're writing, it's, or sorry, it's an enhanced level anyways of retention. And so we give you these notes. I hope you will write some things down in your notes that I have given you. Here's the first thing in your notes. Verified promises of God about heaven. Here's the first thing. We know, we know where heaven is. We know where heaven is. It's a real place. It's a tangible place. This table is tangible. This stage is tangible. This building is tangible. Heaven is in a place. It is in a tangible place. I'll talk more about some of that location here in just a moment, this very real place. But sometimes that's hard for us to grasp because, you know, we can't fully see it. We can't, there's like the Bible, the Bible talks about, there's like this thin veil between us and heaven. But just because there's that veil doesn't mean it's not, just because there's that veil doesn't mean we can't see it. It's still there. Think of it like this. An unborn child in the mother's womb is really close to all the stuff in this world but knows nothing of it. All it knows is the darkness and security of that womb. But it is so close. It is right there just on the other side. When that birthing happens, that child realizes, well, doesn't personally realize, but we see in that moment that they, they are now entered into this place that was near to them the whole time. And when you and I move from here to heaven, we will understand that that place that we've been longing for was so close the entire time. In fact, we can know that heaven is near right now, all of us. We know heaven is near because, heck, during worship, I could sense things of the heavenly realm while I was sitting here worshiping. Jesus is near to us. We know that as believers. The Holy Spirit of God indwelling us. Heaven is near through the power of the Holy Spirit. The angels are all around us right now. Heaven is near to us. We can't fully see it. We can't fully understand it, but it is close. John 14, 2, my father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm coming there to prepare a place for you? It's true. Some translations, heaven is mentioned 582 times. A lot of data about it, about this specific location. It's not just some place. It's not just any old place. I the guy that led us in worship here today, his name is Zach. He's moving to the area to help us lead, help us in worship. And he's moving from Indiana. And, uh, you know, he, he's going to have an address here in this area, not just some place. He's not just going, well, we're going to move. We're, 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 we're leaving Indiana. Let's move some place. He said, you know what, we're, we're going to have, we're going to go to Florida. We're going to be in Pasco County. We're going to have a home address in that county. And the same thing is true as heaven. It does have that sort of specificity to it, this very real place. Paul talks about it. And Paul, in the scripture, he references heaven as this place in the third realm, the third realm of the heavenlies. That's the specific place. What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you, what we know is the first realm would be something like 
uh, the atmosphere and, and, and the atmospheric thing that we know about here on earth. That's the first heavenly realm. The second heavenly realm we would understand to be things that we see visually like the stars and the moon. And then the Bible says that there's this third realm that would be beyond that of what we see in the natural in the second realm, first and second realms of the heavenly, that there's a third thing Paul talks about. We understand that there's something like this ascension that we go to in this third realm and we know where it's going to be. Can't see it, don't fully understand it, but it's there. We're going to get, this is really cool, we're going to get new bodies, isn't that nice? That's super nice. I kind of have some thoughts about what I'm hoping, you know, that body will look like. I've put a picture up here on the screen. I think it's probably something. Uh, there's me at the beach baptism last week. So feeling really good about that. I, my wife is super excited for me to go to heaven if that's what it's going to look like. No more muffin tops. No more man's ears. Some of you will get that later. No spare tires in heaven. Pretty exciting, though. I don't think our bodies will look anything like what we think they're going to look. And so I'm kidding a little bit about that. But we know it's something new. We know it's an upgrade. The whole deal is an upgrade. I'll never forget the first time I, I was upgraded to first class. I don't know if you've ever had that experience, but I was... They would like, hey, sir, first class is pretty empty. They'll do this sometimes, especially if you ask them. But the first class is pretty empty. Would you like to, you know, come up into first class? And, and so she, I said, well, yes. <laughs> and so they said, well, after the plane takes off, you know, we'll walk you up into first class. And so, so it took off, and then we walked up there to the front. And they, they, you know, they pulled a curtain, right, the curtain? <laughs> the curtain. And so I walk, and it's so comfortable, the seats are so much nicer, the food, everything's so much better, you know, up there in first class. You know, they close the door, the, the, the curtain behind you. I'm pretty sure, after just a little bit of time there in first class, if she had asked me, sir, now that you've been up here and gotten a taste of first class, would you now like to go back to coach? If she had asked me that, I'm pretty sure... I would have told her, uh, no, thank you. I don't want to eat peanuts and coach by the toilet. I like it here, you know, in first class. And I'm going to tell you, when you and I get a taste of that place, it's going to be good. You ain't wanting to come back here because it's heaven, and this on earth is not heaven. It is not. I put in your notes what's verified, the who and the what. Let me talk about the who first. We know the who. We know, the, we know the, the, the people and the quantities of people. In Revelation 7, 9, it says this. After I saw, after I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb, for Jesus. Vast crowd, massive population of people. Heaven's a crowded place, apparently. There are a lot of people that you and I are going to experience when we're in heaven. That's why sometimes you know, it's always frustrating. Somebody says, man, I think the church is just too big, Pastor Gary. It's just too big. And I always say, well, you ain't going to like heaven because it's my goodness. <laughs> Here's the thing about New Walk Church that I love. is New Walk Church, we have a desire to keep growing and growing and growing. You know why we have a desire to keep growing and growing and growing? Because we got a lot of people around us, a lot of people in our community who are separated from God right now. And as long as I'm the pastor, and as long as you come to this church and you care about reaching lost people and people who are far from God, you need to know this. We will always be a church that will be growing, so you need to get used to it. Get used to it. In fact, you know, I, I, large churches, small churches, it, I'm not here to talk about that at all. It's, they can all be incredible. But show me a church that has stopped growing or declining in attendance, and I will show you most likely a church that has forgotten to care about lost people. It's just the truth. And so we gotta be growing because the kingdom of God needs to grow. It's our job as believers to care that others around us who don't have what we have can have what we have. That's why we're doing greater things, the greater things journey that we've been on for a couple of years to add on to this facility before COVID. We're not stopping that, it's been delayed, but we're not stopping that. As a matter of fact, if you've been a part of greater things, if you've been a part of that journey with us here, 
at New Walk in October. I have a large update about that and give you some information in October and actually in our next series. So you'll want to be around, be a part of that series. Hey, look, when we get to this place, heaven, uh, there's a couple things we're not going to be doing there. For sure, here's what we know. Number one, we won't sin in heaven. And the other thing you won't be doing is sharing Jesus to lost people in heaven. You won't be doing that in heaven. So that means we're here on earth, we're not in heaven yet. What are we supposed to be doing here on earth? Well, not sinning. So that leaves this. What are we supposed to be doing? Sharing our faith with other people so that they can join this incredibly growing, big place with all kinds of races and all kinds of backgrounds, all kinds of social economic backgrounds, all kinds of languages, people from all different places all over the globe. Why will heaven be filled with people from all over the globe? Because all over the globe, humanity has the same question. There's got to be something more than this. Eternity has been placed in the human heart of every person, of every background, of every race, of every social economic situation. At the end of the day, all people all over the globe must reconcile that situation and people all over the globe have. And so there will be an incredible diversity in heaven. In the church, especially in a diverse community, growing diverse community like New Walk, should also have people from all different backgrounds. And we model that. And it's one thing I love is this area has grown and this area has grown in diversity. We have people from all different races, languages that are part of our church. I love being a part of that. And it's just a little small itty, itty bitty kind of portrait of the diversity in heaven. The what, I'm talking about the what, what will we be doing? We talked about who, it's gonna be crowded. But the what, what will we be doing? Well, the Bible tells us that here on earth we have two great commands to follow. Love God with everything, everything. Worship him holistically, fully with everything. He's first place, not in just some parts of our life, but in every part of our life. That's the first greatest commandment. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. So here's what we know. Here on earth, we are supposed to be working on that, that worship being deeper and deeper in our connectivity and our relationship with God. And we should also be figuring out, with God's help, how to relate to people, to do life, to do connect with humanity and, and if you're like me that's hard sometimes because people are different people are flawed it's not easy but we are in a training ground right now here on earth learning how to worship and relate to people because in heaven you will be worshiping and you will be relating to people and you're gonna be doing it forever and ever and ever so we're, we're learning how to do that here on earth I hope I hope that you are caring about worship and people. Worship, and what is worship? I think people think, well, we came into these doors today to worship. You did not come to New Walk Church today to worship as much as you really came to New Walk Church already worshiping. Because worship is not just what we do here. Worship is happening 24-7 in our life all week long. And so the, the, the mentality of the believer in their life is, I'm worshiping all week. I'm worshiping. How am I worshiping? By putting God first in this area. Putting God first in this area. Because God is not first. That means you've got an idol above him. And God doesn't want us to worship idols, false idolatry. He wants us to worship him first and foremost. And everything in the journey of the believer is worship. Worship God first. And so you came into church today already worshiping. What were you what were you worshiping this week and relating to people? It'll be pleasurable in heaven. Psalm 1611, you make known to me the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. In other words, whatever we know, humanity thinks we know pleasure and we make up all kinds of fake pleasures. But at the end of the day, the greatest, because uh, God created real pleasure, we're going to have this joyful, pleasurable experience in heaven uh, joy is really the best way to describe it. When I think about what we'll do, you know, there's always this thought theologically about, well, God did wire us in our mother's womb. He knit us together, and he did wire every human being uniquely, and God gives us God-given ability to grow the kingdom of God, every one of us. You know, when you become a believer in Christ, you tap in, you really discover that. 
You, un you unpack some of your giftedness and what God has meant for you to do all along in your life. And though we sin and we kind of goof this thing up over time, when you come to know Jesus Christ, that becomes this revealing of like, this is what I put you on earth for, to accomplish. And it's a critical thing that God has for all of humanity. And when you and I are in our faith, we, we, we're, un we're unpacking that. Well, I, I don't believe it's just something God has given us and wired us with here on earth. I believe, I believe we're going to carry some sort of level of giftedness and purpose into heaven. Look what it says in Genesis 2.15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden to, look what it says, to work it and take care of it. It's important when you read that because the, the timing of that's important because this assignment that God has given man has been given before sin entered the world. He said, I've got work for you to do for the things of God. Then, of course, sin enters the world. But then we find when sin enters the world, there's a brokenness that we have to deal with associated with labor. But prior to that, there's this God-given task. And again, we unpack that once we set our sin aside and, and say yes to Jesus Christ, that sinful way of living. We unpack that level of purpose that God has always wanted for us. And then maybe just maybe some of those assignments of our creation and our uniqueness are utilized in heaven. It does say in John 5 and 17, my father is always at work. He's in the heavenly realms. He's always at work to this very day. And I too, Jesus said, am working. And I think there will be some sort of level of work that we're going to be doing in, in, in the heavens. Here's something else I put in your notes. What's verified is the community of heaven. There's something like community in heaven. When you think about earth community, you think of people gathered for something of commonality. And that commonality makes that, 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 that we're cheering. We're cheering together. We're in this community together. Well, there's some level of community we understand in the heavenly realm. First, you need to understand, like, to have community, like, the understanding is, do I have identity in this community? People ask all kinds of questions, and little questions about heaven, you know, and get all kinds of odd questions as a pastor. Oh, pastor, don't all dogs go to heaven, you know? Well, my answer to that is, yes, all dogs, just no cats. So, <laughs> no, that's not true. I'm just being this silly. I'm sorry, all the cat lovers. I have a cat at home, too. So, anyhow, it's not going to heaven, but I got a cat. <laughs> uh, the community of heaven. Pastor, will I be known in heaven? Answer, yes, you will. You will be known. There, I, here on earth, I have this identity. My name is Gary Baldus, and I, uh, you know, I've sinned. I've fallen short. I don't always get it right. I'm very fallible at times, and yet I have been forgiven through Jesus Christ. I'll step into eternity, and I firmly believe I'll be known. And some of the tips and the clues that we get about that in the Scripture, well, here's one thing we know, is once you become a believer in Christ, God does want you to fulfill these assignments. And the Word says that I specifically, uniquely, my identity, I will stand before God and, and, and give an account for what I did with my skills, with my abilities, with my resources. I, I, I am going to stand before Him just on that. How did I do with those things that God gave me once I became a believer. I want to be clear. There's nothing you and I can do to be saved. That's already been done on the cross. We accept that free gift of salvation. But once we become a believer, uh, there's very clear that God wants us to advance the kingdom, to grow the kingdom, to utilize our gifts, skills, talents, abilities. And the Bible is clear that I will be held into account for that. And so I am known in heaven. For an identity that I had here on earth. We'll all be there together in this community setting, 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, and so we will be with the Lord. We'll be there, we'll be in this community forever. But I see more about community when I read Hebrews 12, 1. Look at what this scripture says. Therefore, since we are surrounded, you and I, here on earth, we are surrounded by, by such a great cloud of witnesses. Here's what I know about that scripture. That scripture says that there is some level of people 
watching and cheering us on in what we're doing here on earth. Now, again, this is a theological thing where some people say, well, if they can see what's going on on earth and there's brokenness on earth, how can that be? Because there's no crying, there's no tears in heaven, and there's a lot of brokenness on earth. So if in the heavenly realm they can see the brokenness here on earth, that doesn't sound right. Well, here's what we understand. First of all, there's things about new eyes and new ways to see things. But secondly, we can be sure and know that there's some kind of viewing going on here on earth for things of kingdom advancement. There's a cheering on for kingdom advancement. And so the things that we know would be seen is the things where the people are advancing the kingdom of God. There is a cheering when you and I are moving ahead. You have a long day. You're trying to be good for the things of God and to, to help others know about Jesus, but you've had a tough day. There's a cheering on for us to move ahead and to move forward and to celebrate and to advance the things of the kingdom of God. And I love knowing that I got a cheering section there. And I think... I think we all would like to have a cheering section. Life isn't easy. Here's the great news. You don't have to just have a cheering section in heaven. Did you know you can develop a cheering section right here on earth? A gathering of a group of people like, that you are connected with, that you've gotten to know, that are on the same move with you and your faith. In other words, they want to grow and you want to grow. We all have different situations going on in our life, but a group of people that are wanting the best for you and you want the best for them, we can have those. That's why we do, it's one of the reasons, one of the reasons why we do small groups here at our church is, yeah, so that you can get together, we get together with people who want the best for you. And, and you know what? It takes time to develop those relationships, but those relationships are critical because there are moments where you have a tough day and you have a tough time and you're going through some things and you could, if you wanted, you could reach out to your group and they will cheer you on and they will help you continue moving and they'll say, hey, don't stop, don't stop, keep moving, keep moving ahead. And I hope that you've taken the time to care about signing up and taking the step to sign up to be a part of one of our small groups that are offered this fall. We're in sign up time right now. It's several hundred people sign up last week, but lots of groups with lots of room and lots of opportunity. I'll say this, I've said before, if you only come here on the weekends, you're only getting half of New Walk because the other half is taking place during the week. Until you decide to get connected that way in a group, you're, you're not getting the full experience of what New Walk has to offer. We say at our church, there's two ways to connect at our church. Get on a serve team and be in a group. I hope you've chosen to get on a serve team. I hope you'll choose be a part of a group. How do I get connected to a group? Well, here's how you get connected. You can go to our website. There's a, a way there for getting connected. You can view all the small groups that we have to offer on all the different nights of the week. You can also go to our app. We have an app, New Walk Church app, or we can make it super easy for you. You go down the hall, right out here, these doors on the left-hand side, there's this long table there. It's called our Connect Table. And they have catalogs there of all the groups. You can thumb through them, whatever groups you're interested in. They'll help you sign up right there at the Connect Table. If you're ready to sign up, I hope you'll develop that cheering section for your life. I know we want lots of information about heaven. You and I do. We do. We want. I, I don't know that we can handle all of it. I've come to that understanding. You know, think about it like this. If you had a two-year-old or a three-year-old and you were trying to teach them math, well, here's where you're starting. One Two, you're doing count, count, counting, color by numbers. You're not busting out like calculus on your two-year-old. My parents did with me, but I'm just saying, not everybody's at that level. No, that's not the case. You know, you're, you, they can't handle that information. You know, it's like, here's the basics. And then you kind of grow over time, and you learn more, right? You, you learn more. You develop a little bit more math skills, and you learn, and you grow, and you grow in, in that area. And the same thing is true spiritually when it comes to heaven. We, we get a little bit, and then we get a little bit more. We study the Word, and God reveals things throughout our life, and we get little bits and pieces, and it all builds up with incredible data, but we don't get the whole thing until that thin-like veil is removed, and we cross over into eternity. Here's the last thing I want to share with you. The situation of heaven. What's the situation? The situation is this before you and I. God has prepared a place that if you get this right in your life, I said this before, you will be very, 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 very right. 
But the situation is also this. If you get this wrong, you will be very, 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 very wrong being separated from God eternally. I promise that. I want you, though, to get this right. I want you to understand the situation is this. John 14, 6. I am the way. Going back to the scripture again. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. As a believer in Christ, we understand this fully. That you know what? We have temporary citizenship going on here on earth. But our permanent citizenship belongs in heaven. And we have that opportunity to say yes to Jesus. We invite him into our lives. And we know that heaven awaits us, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Here's the situation, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. It is an incredible situation in heaven. You're here today and you're a believer in Christ. You're here today, you're a believer in Christ. You actually believe that you're spending an eternity in heaven. If that is the lens that you live your life, that there is an eternity and everything here is temporary, that should absolutely cause you to live differently, to speak differently, to care differently, to love differently, to act differently. It should be in every area of your life permeating all of it because this is temporary. Amen. But Amen. sometimes I think we're, we're not digging in in our faith and we're not growing in our faith and we're not fixing our eyes on Jesus and the promises of eternity and we, we don't operate maybe the way we ought to as believers and I understand we can make those mistakes but the thoughts of heaven should cause us to want to get this decision right. If you make this decision, it will be a very, very good choice. If you miss this decision, it will be a very bad choice. Your choice. Let's pray together. God, we've been given the opportunity as believers uh, to share and to grow and to love and to act differently, love differently, care differently. I'm praying that just as our time together here for the believers, that we would spend time, Lord, reflecting and being reminded of the lens that we look through when it comes to heaven. It is an incredible place. It is a powerful place, and it should transcend all areas of our lives. And so God, help recalibrate us, those who call ourselves believers here today, watching online. But I want to speak to the unbeliever who's with us right now. There are some here. We're glad you're here. Lord, thank you, God, for bringing them. God, I want to speak to the unbeliever watching online. It's a very real choice about this very real place in this very real eternity. Our choice. Father, I pray. God, there will be somebody here who's ready to make that decision. It's, it's, it's an easy decision when it comes to the simplicity of it. It's, it's really just a portrait of surrendering and accepting the gift of Jesus Christ. 2,000 years, just in a moment like this, in an instant, people have chosen to turn to Jesus. It's that easy. It's a choice. God, I'm ready to receive the forgiveness of sin. I'm ready. That's our first step. I, I, I've, I've, I've gone away from you, God, but I'm ready to come to you now, and I believe that there is no other way to the Father but through Jesus Christ who came to this earth as a gift of salvation, forgiveness of sin. God, I receive that gift today. God, you're forgiving me right now in this place. You're forgiving me of my sin starting fresh. The slate is being wiped clean. I'm having newness right now. Just surrendering to you, God. That you made me to live differently. That you made me for something else. How our prayer would be for any of us that we, hey, look, we don't understand how all this works, but ready to start that journey today, God, as a forgiven person whose destination is eternal life in heaven. God, show me new things from this day forward in Jesus' name.